Hello guys, DJ Parson here and I bring you a very special game today and I'm not alone. I'm actually joined by the two players who played this game with me and you probably know them and like them as well. We have Weidenbaum and Payada here. Hello, nice to be on your channel. Yeah, great yeah. for... Thank you very much nice for coming. Nice to be here. Thank you for inviting me, DJ Parson. Yeah, very, very excited to do this together with you guys. Uh, if you don't, guys don't know, Weidenbaum has a channel and Payado also has a YouTube channel uh, where they upload games. So uh, definitely check out their YouTube uh, channels. And yeah, this is the, um, I don't know, it's the one of the first games of the Intermezzo Championship. We, are, we all three went into the Grandmasters. Um, so we decided to comment on this game together. So, yeah. guys, uh, we, yeah, I, I think we do it like that. We just start and everybody talks about their turn and then uh, maybe get some comments from the other players, right? Yeah, that's a good idea. Okay, so do we first take a look at the leaders and wonders? Uh, is there anything that you guys uh, find interesting in these or anything you notice? I think there is a nice mix. You can go the culture route or you can go the science route. There is Sid Meier, Einstein, Manhattan Project, but there's also Fleming, Hollywood. There's also Shakespeare and Darwin, but also Newton and Nobel. So I think both science and uh, culture strategies can work very nicely. Yeah, sure. And you, Piana, do you see potential for an early military push? Yeah, I can see some red dots everywhere. It's also yeah. a good sign for some military push, but I'm playing from the third seat, so I don't know if I will have like the possibility to go for a military way. I often play military, but it's better like to be seated on a first or second position. Yeah, that's that's definitely true. So yeah, my first turn, um, I guess in two players it would probably be standard to take the Acropolis, but in three players I still think the Roman Roads is better. What do you guys think about that? What would you have yes, taken? I, also Roman roads? I think I would have taken Roman roads as well. There might be some situations where the Acropolis might be better, but I think most of the times in three player games I like the Roman roads more. Ah. Yeah, I, I may even go like for Cleopatra because I really like her. It's like one of my favorite leaders and there was there will be like a, one wonder for you, so I may even like go for Cleo, but it's close call and I definitely like Roman Roads more than Acropolis. Yeah, I mean, sure, there's Acropolis, Colosseum and Rum Road, so Cleopatra would have been a good alternative as well. Yeah. All right, so next up, Weinbaum. Uh, yeah, so at my turn I take Leopatra. I don't think I want to take anything for two civil actions. I mean, I could take the Colosseum, but I don't like it too much in three-player games, and there are a lot of leaders with military actions. And yeah, and when I take Leo, I thought about maybe taking Richland together with her and hoping for another wonder. There's also the pyramids that could come out of the deck, but it could also be that I miss out on the pyramids and I have to go for the Colossus without uh, a Zeus cannon in the game. And so I just took the Agropolis so that I for sure have a wonder together with Cleopatra. Yeah, sounds perfectly reasonable. Also, what I would have done. Yeah. Yeah. And this leaves me with also like very straight option which I should take and because I cannot like take three cards for one selection I'm just like going for Colosseum which is like very nice wonder I really like to have like three MAs when playing from the last seat because DJ Parson sometimes can be very dangerous when he's playing from the first seat and then it's like Richland or Frugality and I think Richland is really better yeah yeah so do you like Colosseum more in third position to have it in a de uh, defensive uh, capabilities or do you like it more to go aggressive? I like it more for defensive purposes mm. because I think when you are on, on a first seat, you it's, it's not needed like to have like three, three MAs. And yeah, I like it like more for defensive purposes and also uh, the third M MA can like then allow you to go for building two military units and rebuilding a tactic in a single turn, which is like a, quite an important sometimes. All right. All right. So next up is probably leaders. Then let's see. H one starts. The permits do come out, but I think no one will finish their wonder in time to go for that. 
Uh, yeah, I got Confucius, which uh, I, I like the combo very much with the extra rocks from the round roads and a little bit of extra rocks from Confucius. Elect him, build the mine and increase pop. So I think very standard move. If you get the Wanda in your first turn, going for a leader, elect him, build the mine and increase pop is like the standard move, right? Yes, and I also like Confucius very much together with the Roman roads. Yeah. Extra rock from Wander and extra science from Leader. Yeah. Good combo. There are three things that I definitely want to do. I want to elect Leo, I want to build a lab, and I want to increase my population. And then I have to take one of those yellow cards and. I mean, in, in the most circumstances, I would say that something like urban growth or frugality is probably better than stockpile. But the stockpile here allows me to build one stage of the Acropolis and the mine at the next turn. And because of that, I took the stockpile. It gives a Joker for one civil ac action to Payada, but I thought that he might want to go for Romea anyway. So I, yeah, so I was uh, perfectly happy with taking the stockpile here. Yeah, interesting. I, I thought. I thought about it, why you would go stockpile, but uh, yeah, it's a very good reason to keep in mind that the next turn you want to build the one stage plus the mine, which is <clears throat> sometimes a problem with the uh, with Cleo that you don't get in the mine when you want to use her extra rocks each, each turn. Yeah, and also like Vagenbaum has like wonder with just two steps, so he will have time to like go for a stockpile. And in general, I don't think that stockpile is a dead bad card. It's just like for two civil actions, two resources, so it's like the same as reserves one. Yeah. So it's fine card, I would say. Yeah, that's true. So in my turn, I have like option to go for Homer or Ashoka because I don't want to spend two civil actions on Sun Tzu. He's not one civil action better than these two. And uh, I think Ashoka is much better from the last position than like from the first one because you get earlier can get to some cards from h1 but i still went for homer i will have like two happy faces for my wonder and leader and i can i can be like then maybe even like prepare for some attacking with that many happy faces and military potential yeah <clears throat> Did you think about using the extra rocks to build a warrior, or do you um, no, always keep no, the free uh, the free work? I think I, I will have like the same situation next turn, so I can like postpone this extra rock for the next turn because I will definitely not build a warrior this turn and also the turn after that. So I yeah. think it's okay. not wise to do that. Yeah, I find it sometimes hard to use the extra rocks on Homer, and I think if I should keep trying to use them more, but yeah, you can't use them each turn, it's not not like Cleopatra. Uh, so I pushed, sadly I missed out what I pushed, uh, maybe you guys remembered. Um, but we will see if not. So I opened the development of agriculture, so we have quite a bit of uh, food now. And then I have an opportunity to go for the masonry, I can grab that for two this turn, um, and then I haven't built any stages of the Roman roads yet. So that will give me that in uh, two civil actions. And with with uh, Confucius, I have a little bit of extra science. That's why I thought the Mason here is good. And also the first row is just uh, terrible. I have in Richland A and then two leaders I can't take and two wonders I can't take. So I thought I had to take anything from the second row anyway. And I thought Masonry would be quite nice here. Yeah, I think it's the best card for you from the cards in the two civil action area. Yeah, yeah, I would maybe start like working on the Roman roads because I I think like you will have like plenty of signs, so I will I may like postpone building the second lap. But yeah, that's just like my general style. You don't need signs for that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true, true. Yeah, so. yeah, this turn I can execute my plan with going for the stockpile and then I have enough resources to build a mine, build a stage of the Acropolis. And I'm still not out of corruption, so my last move is also basically forced and I want to increase my population. I was a little bit unhappy that uh, two swordsmen and a knight are coming down the road and I miss, might miss out on all of them. But I, uh, yeah, I just wanted to use Cleo, I wanted to build my third mine and so I was willing to skip on those military technologies and I was hoping that I still might uh, get one. 
And no, and I did and didn't push because the only event that I have in hand at this time is the uncertain borders. And I definitely did not feel comfortable mm -hmm. pushing that, especially with potentially missing out on those fourth and ninth. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So yeah, so I was definitely happy to see like swordsman coming my way, mm -hmm. and I see it call to arms in this round. Yeah, I was also like happy receiving two science and I just like think, okay, so I, I have plenty of science. I will have a discount from Colosseum. So I don't need to like go for, for a second lap yet. I can like postpone it. And yeah, then I just built two steps of Colosseum and increase my population to get out of the corruption. And I also like was thinking, okay, should I like build a warrior now to just use the extra bonus, but I was again like thinking, okay, but I will probably not use all these bonuses in the future. So let's just wait. I can do that next turn. Let's just draw two cards because my other card in hand was fighting band. So I cannot like see it now. And so that was my turn. Wow. Yeah, it was... Are you already... Yeah, go Are ahead. you already eyeing the printing press that is coming down the row? Because that's of course not a leader to delay, another uh, reason to delay the second lap. Yeah, that's that's another reason. I I I really like printing presses in in four player, not that much in a in a three player. But I think this intermezzo I played many printing presses, <laughs> and I, I think like, they are like f fine. And yeah, I I prefer like to have some early car culture, not like very early, like but with, from the printing presses. Yeah, so that's another another thing why I didn't build the second library. Yeah. All right, so yeah, this time I will look at which card I will play if I decide to push, but with Confucius, of course, I want to. And then I play the new deposits. I will have extra rock production from the Roman roads, so that was that idea. And I will open the religion, and I think all of us are prepared, right? Each of us can take that free religion. Yeah, uh, oh no, you can't see it here. Everybody, yeah, everybody will be able to take that. Um, and then I take the monarchy because I have the exact science to go for that. Uh, of course, I could have also gone for the masonry, but uh, or masonry and built like two stages of the Roman roads. But at this turn with eight science, I, I still like the early monarchy. Um, I think it's a little little bit less good in three players because there's two conmons and two republics. But um, it is very early, and I have the exact science, so I can go for that. Increase population, grab knights, and then I will still have enough science with Confucius to go for the masonry next turn and finish the Roman roads at one stage. So, yeah, I, I'm pretty happy with this turn getting the monarchy, um, having no corruption, being ready, having a good plan for the next turn as well. I think you all have a nice situation. And then I even draw a tactic, which is uh, even better with having just grab those knights, getting the perfect tactic for that. Um, now I'm probably feeling very confident, also with the territory in hand and two colonization cards. I think at this turn, uh, I'm very happy about my early game. Yeah, yeah your, your civilization looks pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> I still uh, only have the uncertain borders in hand and I still uh, don't really want to push that into the deck so I skipped my politics phase and my first instinct was to finish the Acropolis to use the bonus resources of Cleopatra and then I may uh, thought that I maybe want to prepare to go for iron at the next turn but I thought uh, if I finish the Acropolis now it is definitely not for certain that I can use Cleo at the next turn there's no wonder coming down the row there's no alchemy coming down the row I didn't really want to go for printing press here with already having built a second lab and so I thought I just uh, want to get the iron uh, this turn up and then I miss out on Cleo's resource once but next turn I can finish the Acropolis and then maybe either replace her or maybe be then at a um, turn after that I finally uh, maybe have a wonder or something else where I can use the resources of Clio again. So I went for one upgrade to iron and then I have one civil action left and I took the swordsman so that, that I have uh, one uh, military technology in hand I can take it for one civil action so I think that's a nice opportunity to take it now and now I didn't feel too uh, threatened anymore uh, now that I got one of those copies of swordsman. Yeah, and it's it's very wise to take copy of Swordsman when you are playing with Payada. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> so I drew border border conflict and seeded it. So now I just like said, okay, I at the start I said that I will play Colosseum for defensive purposes, but mm. that's not true anymore. <laughs> and I I find it like very nice that now I will have like three military actions and also I can go for swordsman and use one of these military actions every round to use just the Homer bonus. So and still like keep drawing cards because the remaining cards in my hands are like two tactics, phalanx and fighting band. So I just like need to draw more events to be able to push the deck. And here I took the printing press, which I was thinking about even like last year and then probably a yellow card. So I would say just Burban Groft is here good because I will definitely build printing press next round. So I will use these two rocks immediately if I took just a rich land i will not get anything and also i can like take one of these two urban growths and i was thinking that i need like to slow down the deck and not not give dj pass parson the christopher columbus for one and then maybe i will get some of these nice cards which are in, in a card or like wonder or code of law or something mm. so I just feel that this was like better to take the Urban Draft on the left. Yeah. So do, did you plan on maybe going for Zizka? Do you do do have a tactic hand, right? The fighting band? Yeah, yeah. I have I have fighting band, but I I don't think Zizka will be there ah. because yeah, we all know how strong it is and Maybe Christopher Columbus c can be there and also like taking the Urban Draft on the left, there is like higher chance that it will not be discarded because if the UDJ Parson took like, I don't know, Richland in irrigation, then Christopher Columbus will not be there for my turn. And I have like three MAs, so I, I will be like drawing plenty of cards. So Christopher Columbus can be like a good leader for me. Mm. Okay, interesting. So yeah, I not sure if I do push the developed. Yes, I do with two colonization cards in hand. I feel confident that I might win it. And then we get the development of politics. And then, uh, yeah, I get my science app that I had planned thanks to Confucius. And then this turn is the perfect turn to go develop the masonry, finish the um, wrong road. So I developed the masonry even with the, uh, with the um, development of civil life. So I only cost two science and I saved the civil action. So I still have plenty of civil actions to do something with. And then I go for Zizka and the frugality so Zizka with the tactic and maybe not the perfect tactic but it is pretty good i don't have that much free population so it might be hard to get for to go for two knights um but yeah in in a game like this i see payada having colosseum and the swordsman um then it's always wise to have the military option and with this i feel i felt pretty good before and now i also feel secure so that i like my position even more I don't know, do you guys would have gone for irrigation in which land? I guess that would have been the best alternative instead of Zizka. No, I think I would have gone for Zizka as well. And with taking the frugality, you also let the code of law stay on two civil actions for me. Mm. So, no, I think that makes sense. Yeah, yeah nicely played. I would do the same. <laughs> okay, good. Oh, a lot of colonization cards. <laughs> a lot of colonization <laughs> cards, yeah. So that one colony that is in there, I hope to win it. Yeah, and is the best thing is that if you draw the colonization cards, the others don't have them, so it's yeah. <laughs> double good. Double good, yeah. After the development of politics, I have now some events in hand, and I uh, push the knowledge of the ancients, and yeah, the call to arms is revealed. I see that because I'm not the weakest, and I also will finish the Acropolis, so I also won't be the weakest after my turn, so I just wanted to get some events out and maybe uh, dodge one of the bad strength events. And yeah, I see that the knowledge of the ancients, first of all, it's a relatively neutral event, but I also had a specific plan in mind here. Because this turn I can finish the Acropolis with using the resources of Cleo. And then I have some civil actions left, and I, I took the irrigation, and I think I increased my population. 
And I was eyeing at Michelangelo here and Machu Picchu. Mm -hmm. I thought that it is not, not unlikely that both of those cards will be available for me because it very likely won't be in the discard spot on the Chip Parsons turn because uh, for that uh, Payada would have to take the Code of Laws and the Alchemy and he already has printing presses in hand. And I thought when I get a Machu Picchu, a lot of production together with Michelangelo that could uh, make for a very interesting game and because of that I took the irrigation and because of that I thought that maybe the knowledge of the ancients will even turn out to be very good for me because I might have a lot of wonders available. So that was what I planned for the next turn, taking the irrigation and then maybe going for Machu Picchu and Michelangelo at the next turn. I could even do something like uh, take Michelangelo at the next turn, elect him, uh, take the Machu Picchu, use Cleo's resources again on the Machu Picchu and then maybe upgrade one of my mines. So, yeah. All right, some big plans for next turn. Yeah. So yeah, it's... and I think this is like the reason why Weidenbaum is so good lately, and I think <laughs> that he maybe learned this from Irene. So he's like really looking far away on on the right side of the card row and planning like his turns in. Uh, and this is like the reason why he's so good lately and. Yeah, yeah. I, I often have the problem that I look at the first row, the second row, but I don't mind the third row too much. I think maybe there's something I want to grab, or I, I'm not going to plan for it for next turn most of the time. So yeah, interesting to hear how far yeah. ahead you, you plan. Yeah, yeah, so we like... will see at the next turn that those plans don't always <laughs> will work. <laughs> yeah, but it's still like good like to just imagining what other people will do, which cards they will take, so how the card row will will fall for your next turn yeah so i draw some extra cards uh, from that uh, development of politics so now i have like historic one in hand and i also has raiders and foray and yeah when i went for the military path you probably know which card i will see and it's like the foray and yeah we all get one science so even without that one science i'm like able to go for one printing press and then I will definitely grab one code of law and having like a historic one already in hand I'm just like taking also the Christopher Columbus I have like some fallback colony so he will at least bring me something and I'm still like hoping for many draws in h1 and h2 and drawing some very nice colony yeah so I, I think also with your setup you can keep Homer for quite a while, uh, quite a while. So just keep Columbus in hand. You you are not in a hurry to get a new leader. So Columbus is perfect for you, um, and yeah, you can yeah, yeah. keep using the extra rocks on Homer. So I think that it works really really well. Yeah, and if if some colonies even like pop out, I think like Homer is one of the good like colonization leaders because he is like giving you extra rocks. Budica is the best from HA leaders, but Homer is still quite good. Yeah. And I again like don't take many cards, so I expect like like H one ending at least like seven rounds for all of us. So yeah, I can use Homer's bonus many many times, yeah. maybe even two times more. Okay, so I have uh, drawn another territory, the inhabited one. So I have colonization cards, tactics, and the colony, and with still having Confucius, I think I will push that. And then with all of the colonies in there, I guess I could think about cartography, but I only have three selections this turn. So let's see first my pushing and we get the border conflict. So I get hit here quite quite a bit for being the weakest. First the call to arms and then the border conflict. So I will have to destroy something. I destroy the philosophy lab. Um, and then we will see that I go for Zhishka. And I have enough signs for knights, so I do think I go for them, right? Yeah, I go for knights this turn. Can build one, go up to three strength. And then I decide to take or hope to get even more use out of my masonry and get that Silk Road. Uh, I think the most interesting decision in this turn for me was if I should destroy a mine or the philosophy. Mm, and I think the, the main part was then that I wanted that I need a lot of rocks because I plan to go for at least one more night. And then I also want to finish the Silk Road uh, in a reasonable time. So if I destroy my mine and maybe don't rebuild it, um, then I would have a problem uh, getting all those those rocks. I guess I could have just rebuilt the mine as well. That could have worked. Uh, but like Piata said, why, why would you need science in, in TTA? 
Yeah, and also this decision to keep the mine and uh, the leader lab will also have consequences for my turn. Which we will then see, of course. Ah, yeah, I play my tactics, so I'm going up to 5 strength. And then we will see Weinbaum's politics space. Yeah, I have now the open borders agreement in hand, and that is maybe one downside of Jan Shishke. You don't get the open borders agreement offered very often, and so I offer it to Payada, hoping that he accepts it, even though he has uh, the Colosseum already. There is not enough MAs for me, you know, I can spend <laughs> even five. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I always wonder about, uh, should you decline this sometimes when you're already on three MAs, but most of the time I still take it because it can still give yeah. extra use. And then the opponent could just offer it next turn to the other opponent, then he gets the bonus. So I mostly yeah, take yeah, it. I would, I would even say like agreeing on open border agreement and the next round just cancelling it. So like yeah. not your both opponents have it. It's like much better than just like declining. Yeah, true. Yeah, that's true. At this turn, you know, you know, I definitely thought about going for this Michelangelo and Machu Picchu plan, but there is a problem because DJ Barson has now six resources, not five, because he kept a mine and it's just enough to build two knights and then he would go up to 13 strength and I have to be prepared for that. And when I go for Machu Picchu and Michelangelo, I just can't prepare myself well enough at the next turn if DJ Barson should build those two knights. And as said, um, yeah, I was a little bit sad not to be able to go for, go for a nice Michelangelo game, but uh, John of Arc is also very nice. I have one religion already and she will help me to um, defend myself so yeah, because of the military pressure I uh, was not able to go for Michelangelo I go for John of Arc elect her immediately sadly I also can't really use the resource of Cleo I mean I could maybe build a second religion that would work nice with John of Arc but I wanted to have the two free population available for the swordsman and so I just upgraded uh, two mines uh, so that I have now my resource production up at the next turn I'm prepared to build two swordsmen and uh, at this point I have three defense cards in hand so I think uh, I and DJ Parson we have both all of the defense cards and yeah, uh, that's so sad <laughs> and um yeah so i will be able to defend against the potential aggression even when dj parson goes up to uh, 13 strength yeah, i'm glad that we are not playing a squid game because then you will know that i cannot like do any defense cards <laughs> <laughs> even seven in total yeah true so yeah, and and for my turn, I think that I see the uh, Raiders still like keeping Historic One in hand because of Columbus. Yeah, and as you can see, it's quite hard to be competitive in colonies when you don't have any boats. So this one was won by DJ Parson, who was willing to, I would say, bit how how much DJ uh, three plus. I I'm not sure exactly if we, can we see how much. No, I don't think we can see how much oh. it would have bit. Uh, but we I, can see, I think in your lock we can see it there. I think it will be written there, isn't it? Uh, no, no, don't I, say this. No, 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 no. no um, if, if I remember, I, I have one colony more in in the deck, so I don't think I went full. Like I could have easily gone knight and four cards. There would be six, but I probably did like warrior and three cards or so four. Maybe four was mm -hmm. was my bid. And yeah, for you, Weidenbaum? I mean, we yeah, see your bid was three, but yeah. Uh, I also didn't uh, get all in because I still needed some defense cards to potentially defend, and so I only was willing to send two uh, defense cards away and not all of my three. Mm. Nice, yeah. And with this, I switch leaders, and I was thinking what to do. I would like to use the extra resource from Homer, so I built third swordman. I also drew a legion, so I will play a tactic, and then there was like option of taking two cards for one civil action or, or one for two, two, two civil actions but yeah, iron can be quite good I have a lot of not a lot of science but a re reasonable amount of science and I can like build it even later so I just went for iron and engineering genius and I don't know if this was a mistake or not but like engineering genius is not very useful card for me now because there are I think just two H1 wonders in a deck and both of them are like for happy faces and mm. I have enough happy faces because of the Colosseum plus Homer combo 
but I, I was thinking, okay, but maybe H2 lead, uh, H2 wonder will come and I can keep this and maybe go for Harvard College or something which will come. So it's it's definitely not the strongest card now, but it's just like investment for the future. Yeah, better than nothing, I, I would say. I, I agree with the Iron plus Engineering Genius. I mean, the, I guess the only alternative would have been the Cultural Heritage maybe, but um, I yeah, like I like the Iron. Yeah, and inter interestingly, I also had one nice aggression in hand, and it's a kidnap. So with like now revealing the Legion and coming to the eighth strength, I may even have like some potential to steal some nice cards. So uh, let's see if, if I will be able or not. Yeah, let's see. Okay, so I have drawn yet another colony. I've just uh, discarded or spent two colonization cards. I think I thought about sending the knight and keeping one more colonization card. Um, but with Jishka's, it's just so perfect to send away the warrior. So I decided to keep the knight. Uh, and then I think I do play the vast territory here. Let's see. Yes, I do. And we open the new deposits that I played. And we get a lot of extra rocks. And then, yeah, I think yeah. I, I, I'm not sure if I did go for the cartography then. There's, yeah, I do. Because there's, I've played two colonies the strategic and now the vast um so i still see a lot of value it is very very expensive i only have the one science production um but i can go for this turn and still finish the silk road and i think that's what i do i develop that and then thanks to the masonry oh no i don't finish it i spam some knights instead oh yeah i uh, because the culture heritage with plus two science is also very nice for you <laughs> yeah <laughs> exactly the part of the Silk Road that you don't need to finish it to get the effect is coming in. I often forget about that. Uh, but this time I didn't. I did use the Frugality to get the extra food. And then I can, with my last Civil Action, get that Cultural Heritage. And go up to 11 Strength. So putting pressure on Weidenbaum, getting stronger than Payada again. Because I think a lot of these cards, yeah, most of them were played Payada. Uh, by yeah, by think, Payada. Yeah, there is a Furay and a Raiders from me. So like... Yeah, strength events in in a deck. Two colonies from you and Weidenbaum. I think yeah, put the the knowledge of ancients. So this is like yeah. the mix which is there now. But we we don't know what the others put there. But now we know. <laughs> yeah, now we know. If if only uh, in in the real game you would know as much as we do now. Yeah, yeah and then you can see that I'm quite a sad when I see like that all the nicest colonies are not there for me to be their own because they're, <laughs> yeah. like, yeah, they're owned by DJ Parson and now yeah. even with the car cartography. I was thinking, okay, so DJ Parson has some nice colonies, so I will not be drawing any in H1, probably. Yeah, probably. Okay, yeah, so... My turn, I am the weakest, but I, of course, with the turn of August, see the top event, and because of that, I see that, because on top is the vast territory, and I thought that I maybe now have the best shot on winning it, but uh, four is not enough for me to win it. Yeah, and this is... Yeah, this is... Yeah, this was quite hard for me because I was st st I was willing like to bid two units without a blink of eye, but without not having any defense cards, five plus means for me like the whole army. So it's not like five plus; it's eight. I just like bid everything mm. because I I was thinking that I can like rebuild maybe quite easily. That, that there is like some danger from DJ Parson of like having an aggression. But I, it's it still will not be possible because I can like pretend that I have some defense cards in hand and can can defend it. But yeah, in retrospect, it wasn't that great to like bid three units. You can do that with Barbarossa, but not with yeah. Christopher Columbus. Yeah, Christopher Columbus should use get vast, vast territory without any units. Right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's how it should work. work. Yeah, and another funny thing is that I always mispronounce this territory not as a vast territory but as a waste territory. <laughs> yeah, I I definitely think that this was like a waste. Yeah. Yeah, that's a lot of rocks, nine rocks, and all the civil and military actions. I I was yeah. very happy when I saw this. I I didn't yeah. bid all of all I could. I only bid the knight without using any cards because I knew there were more. Um, now I, I think I could have at least bid one more colonization card, so I got up to five, but uh, I guess it wouldn't have changed. You you bid the whole army, so you went up to eight. Yeah. Um, so uh, that made me pretty 
Um, I, I also counted that I will use all my blue cubes, so I will not lose uh, lose any food. <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> that's good. You got everything. So perfection, very efficient. Okay, so Weidenbaum. Yeah, now it's my turn. I have quite a bunch of resources out, uh, after the new deposit and, and also the event that I just seeded it was the rebellion and I also have the immigration in hand and so I uh, um, you know, I choose to go for the St. Peter's Basilica or I can get off, out of corruption with building two swordsmen that also um, now I'm able to defend against DJ Parson. I'm at 8 strength and I think even um, for Piada it's not really possible to get stronger than me so hopefully I won't be the weakest for a while. And then I can take the St. Peter's Basilica, that will also give me one additional strength with Vision of Arc, and I can prepare for the rebellion and for the immigration that I still have in hand. Yeah. Yeah, a very strong turn, I think, getting the, the strength up. You don't have a tech team, but you can copy the Legion next turn. Yeah. And <laughs> uh, yeah, getting a Wonder here. I mean, it's very hard uh, to get out of corruption this turn unless you build those uh, Swordsmen. And I think the Wanda is perfect for you with the with the high rock production. So yeah, I no, think that's one, a great turn. One yeah. thing I didn't like is that I have now three food and I will lose the two yellow tokens, meaning that I will be stuck on three food, but at least I have the irrigation in hand and maybe I can use this to increase my population relatively soon and to get rid of the food. Yeah, it always sucks when you have the, just three food. So, Payada. Yeah, so I have to rebuild my army and yeah, another bad thing is that I played, played two strength events before so I knew that like Furay and Raiders are coming so that means that I can like lose even like more resources but as you can see I'm able like to increase population twice, rebuild for six rocks and then I also destroyed religion because I have plenty of happy faces and just like completed again my army that I was very upset that Weidenbaum like build that swordsman so now <laughs> now I'm like the weakest and I will not be part of the foray if it is not like revealed in my turn mm. and another thing why I was like able to even like bid like three uh, three swordsmen to that colony is that I also drew wealthy one territory so I have like potentially another like six rocks in my hand for my next political action so I was like thinking that maybe if Weidenbaum will have just like seven strength and then I will be like part of the foray and get some like food then I will be like back like one of the two strongest and then I will have plenty of advantages of this like nice colony for me so that, that, that was the plan and reasoning why I went for that but let's see if it will happen or not yeah. and and I also have like one civil action left and led I, I have a lot of rocks I, there is like no food which I can take so breakthrough is the only choice I would say yeah works great yeah. you have the coat and the iron so a lot of, a lot of science cost all right so I only have the cultural influence in hand but that works great I have three culture production and we'll get more with Silk Road, so I think I pushed that one. And we get the Raiders, so Weinbaum and Piada will lose stuff, and these knights are doing great for me. Um, I will then finish the Silk Road. I will use the upgraded uh, cultural heritage, getting the extra science and, of course, the extra culture. Um, and I'm not even in corruption, so I wouldn't have to increase pop, but I have not seen uh, rats, so I do think I will increase. <laughs> okay, I won't. <laughs> Sorry, I misremembered that. Uh, did I see rats, or is this not just really, really dangerous for me not to increase yeah, population? I, I think you didn't have uh, rats in hand. Yeah, so now it's looking at this, I think I should have increased population. Um, I get bread and circuses. There is Pierre after all. Also, I think bread works really well with the masonry. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, maybe it's just maybe not really because it already is so cheap. And the biggest problem is that you need a lot of population and not three rocks for the bread. Um, yeah, but I decide to take the bread and circus to the rich land. I won't be upgrading my production because both iron and irrigation are gone. So this rich land is probably just for either building another. Uh, another mine because uh, I have so much population that I could just build another bronze or upgrade 
later. Yeah, and it also with the Silk Road could potentially help a lot when you want to go for coal later. Yeah, true. Yeah, yellow cards in general. That might be the reason why I don't want to increase population to get a couple of yellow cards with the Silk Road. Um, and I will produce extra food here thanks to the uh, thanks to not increasing population. So it also has some some upsides, I guess. Okay, so H two will be over now, and we start with H two. Yeah, and H H one was really like long. I think you played like eight turns, DJ Parson, and usually like and H is like in a seventh round for like the last player. So yeah. yeah, we get like extra two. I don't know how it's called round or turns. Yeah, probably turns. Yeah. Now this turn I see the other happy face related event and pushed immigration in and now that Payata destroyed uh, his religion I was also very confident that I might be able to win it. Again a colony is on top and I thought that at uh, my politics phase I might have the best chance to win it but this time DJ Parson is willing to bid quite a lot. Yeah. I'm gonna, I bid the knight and... One knight. <laughs> one knight is <laughs> a lot. I mean I do have to spend both cards and I know that that there's one more colony in there that I know of, right? The strategic, I think. Um, but mm. yeah, the inhabited is worth very much. Uh, and I still have hope to win the next ones because I still have the colonization. Uh, so getting this colony for just tonight, I think is very, very good. Yeah, yeah very it's, nice it's yeah. much, much better than my last turn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, this turn I have to fix my uprising and for that I basically have to finish my uh, the St. Peter's Basilica and I have only one civil action left. I could just finish it and maybe take the rich land but with having the Acropolis I thought that monarchy will be very nice for me. It's late monarchy, I could maybe wait for an H2 government but also don't have the most amount of science and uh, being stuck on four civil actions can be very dangerous. So I choose to go for the monarchy, maybe I can go for an H3 government at the end. And then after this, I can finish the St. Peter's Basilica, and it also will give me one more strength so that I'm not the weakest. Yeah. And, and you also will stop being like, stuck on four military actions, so now you finally have five, right? <laughs> yeah, I have five, and actually that will help me because now I can copy the Legion tactic without uh, missing out on any draws. So that's also one upside, definitely. Oh, yeah. 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 And I just noticed you, uh, from the Raiders, you got rid of one food because you had three before, so probably because you want to increase uh, your food production by going for two irrigations soon and then you produce four and then have a nice number, right? Yes, I uh, could of course lose two food and then maybe uh, if some more important cards are available and I don't go for the irrigation it could be better, but maybe I will just go for two irrigations at the next turn and then I have just enough food to increase my population. All right. Yeah. And now we will move to my turn when I need some like resource boost so i had like the wealthy one in a hand and i i get like six rocks from that i even like could do this like the turn before but i was like out of all my blue groups <laughs> blue cube so i will just get three rocks so yeah, yeah this turn is definitely better but being just on four civil actions it's quite hard for me to to like not not being not end in in a corruption and another very bad thing is that there is like no way for me to have like higher strength than DJ Parson because I still know that like one of the cards in current deck is Fure and yes staying like on eight strength I will not be able to have that so I opted to build <clears throat> just upgrade all my rock production. And maybe it wasn't that great, and I should like grab the knights because it will like allow me <clears throat> to to have like another another technology in which I can like invest uh, my resources next turn. But yeah, I I just like choose to build three irons and pr probably like prepare for for some like uh, wonder coming. I also will have like six science now. To go for the code of law next turn and i was like thinking okay so let's just like have a plenty of rocks then use the rocks for some wonder and yeah hopefully like come back to the game because i still feel a little bit behind after that my bit of free swordsman yeah probably but i think this turn is good so you get the code next turn as you said and you will have enough food to increase population yeah, and was, maybe build was, a printing press or something. Yeah, it was feeling good un, un, until I just like drew three 
cards from H2 and one of them was Classic Army. Yeah, so. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's why you wanted those knights then, aren't yeah. you? Yeah. Yeah, I also drew a tactic already. I have the mobile artillery in hand, which won't be the easiest transition, but it's always nice to have a tactic in hand. Yeah, especially from the first first draw. Okay, so next up is my turn. I will play the Reign of Terror. We get the foray, so I'm of course very happy about that. That was a card I didn't know about. So getting the extra rocks here, because I feel, uh, of course, I feel in general like I have a very good position. But my production isn't the highest, so getting three extra rocks to just uh, take is is very awesome. If you win the foray, it's always such a great feeling. Uh, yeah, then I have the population here from the inhabited. I decide to build another knight and a farm, so I get up to thirteen strength, being the strongest again. Overtaking Weidenbaum, producing even more culture, and I still have a very very healthy yellow bank. So uh, yeah, Zishka with a couple of uh, colonies that give extra yellow cubes is just uh, yeah <laughs> very easy to play. Yeah. So I don't really. Uh, yeah, yeah your, your, your colonies combines are like like a waste, but you are like plus two blue cubes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, and then yeah, I, I felt like I didn't really have too much I could go for here besides military. I have two aggressions in hand. I saw some weakness here. Payada doesn't have too much population. Uh, one problem was both of you had a lot of uh, military actions, so aggressions wouldn't be that easy. Um, but yeah, I decided to build yet another knight. <clears throat> The breakthrough and yeah. patriotism, so getting these. But I would say like 15 strength is not enough because I think I have like four military actions. So just like pretending I do one defense card plus four, it's like still I will be still like able to defend. So it will be like hard to just like play aggression. I would say yeah, if just like plus seven against four military actions. Yeah, I just felt like I didn't really have anywhere else to spend it. Um, I guess I could have grabbed one less yellow card and then increased population to get out of corruption instead of the knight. Um, but I felt like, yeah, one more knight, why not? Uh, doesn't doesn't hurt. And getting a little bit more yeah, strength. And the yellow cards are great for you because of the silk road. Yeah, yeah, especially the, the patriotism with the extra MA. Yeah, felt like an okay turn for me. Still not, not upgrading the production or the rock production at least. Um, but yeah, then my first card draw was the War of a Territory, and of course that uh, changes things quite a bit because now I don't have to rely on aggressions. Um, but that knight might be, yeah, might come in very very handy now with uh, with this War of a Territory. Yeah, just two draws from H two and already a war. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I see the pestilence, uh, which I am, was not too sure about if I want to see it. I have to, I'm the only player with uh, um, farm technology in hand, but on the other hand, both of you have the better yellow bank, but I wanted to push, and so I pushed the Pestilence into the deck, and also with the Foray now, I can increase my population and maybe prepare for it. Yeah, and then from the Foray, I take two food and one resource, and then I just go for irrigation. Have one free population now, I can upgrade it twice. Of course, I could wait for the selective breeding, but I don't know when that will be available, and both of you could still use the selective breeding, so I thought I would just want to go for irrigation immediately. And I could maybe even build a third farm, though I didn't really want to do this because I just pushed the pestilence. But maybe if I did not push, then that could be an idea. But uh, like this, I choose to take the opera with the St. Peter's Basilica. That's a very nice happy face solution. Of course, the drama could be an idea as well. But I thought with having a nice iron production already, um, the opera might might be better for me. There's sadly no Bach in the game, but I think with the St. Peter's Basilica, it's already... Uh, um, good combination. One thing I didn't really like about it, at least at the first look, was that Darwin will now be available for one civil action for Payada, and that could be a nice leader for him, he just used Columbus, but I thought if he goes for Darwin, that might mean that he doesn't take the Harvard College, which could also be something that he wants, and then that could mean that I will be able to get the Harvard College at my next turn, and I think that will be a great wonder for me, as I definitely can use some more science. Yeah. Definitely, Howard College looks uh, very, very good for you. I mean, a little yeah. bit problematic uh, taking it uh, because it will be quite expensive. Yeah, it but, will be a little bit costly. Yeah, but with this turn, you prepare very, very nice, but it should come down to one for you. So, yeah, like it. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm still the weakest, so I I'm not pushing and yeah, maybe I should listen to future myself, like telling <laughs> that uh, you can have like plus four defense cards in hand, so maybe it's not like wise to build that extra swordsman now to just like pretend that you are able to defend because as you know I cannot have like plus one defense cards from H1 because you both of you draw all of them. Mm. But yeah, I went for this and I think it will be crucial because as you can see the next turn I will have just like nine rocks and nine rocks mean like no two cavalry men and I still have that uh, classic army in hand so if I didn't like build the swordsman now I would have like 12 rocks for the next round which will allow me like to fulfill the tactic but yeah I just like was feeling too far behind on eight strength so I built the second one and then I went for a Darwin because yeah I think Darwin is perfect leader for me and I also took the revolutionary idea to be able to go maybe for a constitutional monarchy if if like the situation will be normal and it then I would like feel very very in very good shape because I will have very solid work production plenty of uh, civil actions and the only thing which I will be missing is, is food but seeing like two, two selective breedings I was sure that one of them will be there for me yeah uh, I've I mean you could have also gone for the reserves right the revolutionary idea uh, should has yeah I guess it has a lot of value because you only have two science protection um, but as you said, you yeah, only yeah. have nine rocks, so reserves would have solved that. And I think mm -hmm. I still might have gone for Code of Laws, personally. Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't know, how do, how do you think about that? Going for the code here, I, I, I guess, sure, you want to keep the science to so have the option for Conmon. Um, yeah, but without, 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 I would still like, still feeling a little bit behind and hoping for the Cavalryman. And I think Cavalryman costs four, yeah, so I would have like four, right? If I put here, play here, Code of Law, then plus yeah. two, I, I will have exactly four because, and yeah, maybe I just forgot that the Cavalry is like cheaper for me because of the Colosseum. I, I don't know, yeah, but yeah, the play with Code of Law also makes a lot of sense. Okay. Yeah. Maybe I was like thinking like the government will be better and I also like need maybe to build the selective breeding soon. Yeah, yeah, I, I still, yeah a lot I of signs of course. A lot of pressure from, from UDJ part. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> I can understand that. So yeah, and I think the pressure will continue because I have nothing to push so I have to decide either go for an aggression which will most likely fail but I have that war in hand as well and I will declare it on Payada. Um, I don't think I thought about uh, what happens uh, if you had classic army. Um, maybe I looked uh, and saw nine rocks so that of course means no cavalrymen or no two cavalrymen for you. Um, but yeah, I, I think using this strength advantage that I have and using my politics phase for something uh, works really well. And then I can also go for the Rifleman, use the Breakthrough, build one Rifleman and then get even more yellow cards. So just loading up on those yellow cards uh, combined with the, uh, with the Silk Road going up to 20 strength. So even if you have a tactic that is not... Like, I guess if you had Classic Army and somehow managed to get an extra rock you could beat me. Um, but I feel even confident that if there is the odd chance that you win this war somehow I might lose one yellow cube that is not the end of the world for me But it might just be an easy one or two yellow cubes that I could steal from you So I, yeah, I don't have very, to win And it was very fast war, you know, you just drew these cards in your like first turn So I wasn't like expecting yeah. it that soon Exactly these early surprise wars where no one is really yet ready for those yet. Those those are some of the meanest. But yeah, Payada is only giving. Uh, sorry, Vlada is only giving me the aggressions and wars. Yeah, I can I, see that you didn't have like any other options. Yeah. So, so sorry, Payada. I, I was forced. I will talk to Vlada <laughs> and, and tell him something. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> Okay. I have three H2 events in hand, a national pride, a historic territory and an independence decoration and with not having one uh, colon yet I thought that independence decoration might be the best card to seed and so I seeded it into the deck. And a rebellion is revealed that I played into the deck earlier. 
And yeah, this term, I uh, still wanted to go for the Harvard College. And yeah, apart from that, I don't really, uh, there's not really anything in the card that I want to take. I could take one copy of selective breeding, but no, uh, if Payada takes one, it, the other one will be denied to DJ Parson anyway. So that doesn't make really any sense. I already have one opera in hand. And so I just, just built two stages of the Harvard College so that I can finish it with one civil action at the next turn, but to get out of corruption, I have to build one unit. I first thought about just building one swordsman, but I have enough defense cards to defend an aggression, and I thought there might uh, be more colonies coming. I have a lot of defense cards, so it might be better for me to have a warrior than another swordsman, and maybe I can win, win a colony very cheap. But, um, yeah, uh, and also I have a lot of military actions, so if I want to upgrade it later on, then I can maybe just do that without missing out on any draw. So I just went for the warrior instead of the swordsman, and then the next turn my plan was then to finish Talbot College and see what is in the card draw for me. Yeah, I think I agree with the warrior. It makes a lot of sense. I mean, I, I also think it wouldn't have been bad to just go with the swordsman, uh, but I think uh, your reasoning is good. You have enough MAs to not probably not make it a problem, and it might have an advantage in colonies or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that you also like signaling with your bids for colonies earlier that you have like three defense cards in hand, but uh, I, I think that like like uh, DJ is not like giving. It that many like uh, notes during the game, so <laughs> yeah. he may not be aware of, of this fact. So it also like looks like quite a nice trap to just like be <laughs> the the target of aggression and just like use these cards <laughs> next round or something. Yeah, we, we, let's see. Yeah. So I was still hoping for maybe the cavalryman because it will be better like to build another another unit than another swordman. So let's see if there will be knights and there aren't any. So now I'm like losing by 10 strength. So I need at least to build one warrior to not use all three yellows from my vast territory and just two. So I went for some civil actions with, with constitutional monarchy and then I destroyed a farm to just build fifth swordsman with I wasn't very happy because that means that like going for that classic army will be still very hard because I'm not producing any food and yeah so I was very unhappy <laughs> that the cavalry wasn't wasn't there for me yeah I... and with, with my last civil actions I don't know what I did yeah I elected the leader probably ah. yeah, yeah I elected the Darwin to start producing some culture and making the grabbing the cavalry next round cheaper for me. And as you can see, I still have the engineering genius in hand. I didn't went for Harvard College, but now at least some wonders are coming. So I was like hoping to get, yeah, maybe the railroad because it will help me with the defense. So let's see how I will play without two yellows from my colonies. And if there will be like any aggressions from DJ Parson on me or not, because I don't have like any defense cards still. So I didn't just do any any defense card, any boats this game yet. Yeah, that is tough. Yeah, very rough turn for you, having to destroy the farm. Um, but yeah, such an early war versus Zizka with 20 strength. I mean, that is hard to, to beat in the beginning of H2, 20 strength. Uh, tough position, tough position. Uh, but at least you have the con one now, so uh, there is still hope, I would say. You have good rock production, and you have the con one, which is always super strong. So Yeah, and I was also like feeling that if, if DJ Parson has a raid or something, yeah, there is like not much to destroy in my civilization. If he will take five rocks from me, it's uh, with plunder, it's not end, end of the world. So I was like, even like, and I was like feeling that now I'm definitely the, the weakest link, so maybe yeah there will be like now fight for the first place and not like <laughs> because i'm i probably not fighting for the first plate first place already in the, in the uh -huh. half of the h2 yeah okay so yeah i didn't have a choice again but to go for an aggression let's see who i choose first of all of course i steal two yellow cubes from payada 
Then I go for an aggression on Weinbaum, uh, because as Piada has said, I did not uh, keep track of how much Weinbaum bid for the colonies two or three turns ago. Um, and even if I had, I probably would have done the same. Um, I could have maybe gone for Piada, but I felt like he had a lot of military actions. Um, so, uh, I mean, yeah, he only needed one H2 card to defend, of course. One H1 card uh, would not have been enough. So, uh, yeah, I could have also gone for Piada. Um, but I thought the same as Piada. Weidmann definitely has the better position now. So, if I get this aggression uh, on P on Weidenbaum, it would be quite strong. Yeah, and I think, like, with, with eight draws, like, the chances that I do at least one, yeah. maybe. I know, like 50, 60 percent. So yeah, I think you did the right call. Yeah. Okay, so then I did grab the coal. So finally being able to upgrade my rocks. Uh, so I was very happy that the coal was on one. In general, my, my card draw, my rows were always so nice. Having a lot of yellow cubes on the first row all of the time. Now getting the coal here. Being able to upgrade one. And I think I grabbed one of those yellow cards and I decided to go for the efficient upgrade. Um, yeah, I, I'm not sure, probably still should have gone for the breakthrough. Sometimes I have the problem that I feel like I have enough science. I mean, uh, some people will laugh that I think that three science is uh, three science production is enough. But for me, it feels like, uh, yeah, I, I have so much science. I have most of the stuff I want. I have my production, I have my military. Um, yeah, so I thought uh, rocks might be more important. Get those uh, efficient upgrade and get two or get the goal online a little bit faster so i don't yeah, you guys maybe. probably think breakthrough would be better or i mean piano maybe not maybe but, but maybe but i think it's a close call because yeah. the fish and upgrade will also give you four resources but maybe the science might be a little bit more useful but i think it's a close call okay yeah and these are these are details i think you have pretty good position and i always feel that if you are like able on purpose or just like uh, that you went for a military and then just like skip h1 technologies altogether and go just straight to h2 this is really like strong because especially in free players there is always each technology twice so mm. you can like don't have these stupid irons and go straight for a coal <laughs> so your civilization is like looking very scary already yeah yeah i agree i i tend to think that iron is very very good but if you do it like this, like go for heavy military early on and then follow that up with coal, it feels like you guys now have to follow up with military first and that time I will upgrade my production and then I will just have the more efficient buildings than, than you guys. So, yeah. Yeah. And I think you can even like this, distinguish some players are like iron players and some are like coal, coal players. So I think in our current Grandmaster group, I think Tamiris is definitely like a coal player. I think yes, he, he sure. doesn't go for iron <laughs> very often. And Palino is like the same. He's like playing in master, I think, but he's also like a coal player. Yeah. yeah. And if other people even like think that iron is that important and are like willing to take it for two civil actions and like spend these resources early in H1, they are like quite happy that they will have the coal later and they just like prepare for bigger economic setup yeah. and one win like in h3 yeah very very often all right so yeah by the way payada if you want colonization cards i just drew three of yeah them. i can just see that <laughs> <laughs> i was a wrong seed in this game yeah <laughs> all right so by now now this turn i see the international agreement i could also see the refugees but no, i will I was not really confident I would be the strongest, but I wanted to push and I didn't. I also didn't want to push the vast territory too. I wanted to continue pushing and then the cultural influence is revealed. Um, I'm in the middle of that. Um, DJ Parson gets the most, most out of it. And this turn I can finish the Harvard College. There's a very strong yellow card for me available on one civil action, the breakthrough. And then, oh. Actually, I don't. I know. Oh, I don't take the breakthrough. <laughs> so I skip the breakthrough, which maybe is a mistake. Uh, but I think the reason I increase my population instead of taking the breakthrough is the pestilence that is still in the deck. Mm. So I uh, no. 
And um, yeah, I still have the mobile artillery, and I felt without a military technology, it could be dangerous. If the Japan draws a second war, then it could make a difference if I have a military technology in hand. Now I have exactly 10 resources, or actually not because I will upgrade one warrior to swordsman now, but I could, for example, threaten the defensive army. At the moment, I only have the mobile artillery in hand, but for that, I also need the cannons, and so I was willing to pay three civil actions for them, and I miss out on the breakthrough, so that is expensive, but I felt my economy is very decent, and I, uh, that uh, danger of getting hit by a war, something like this, uh, is, uh, no. that could be very dangerous, and so I took the cannons for three civil actions. Yeah, I and think. I, and, and I also think that you need like to upgrade your strength by one, because you will just do three cards, and with like having five cards you, you you would not be able to defend right maybe with um i uh, yeah i almost uh, made a mistake here because i first i thought i don't really need to upgrade it because i still have one uh, h2 defense cards in, in hand and the one card and four other cards would be enough to defend with 12 strength the problem is then i would have to discard my tactic mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that will actually make a big difference because at the end of my turn i will draw a new tactic and that is the defensive army <laughs> and so i was very happy that oh. i upgraded upgraded um, my worry to swordsman and uh, mm -hmm. we will see it later that that um, made a big difference yeah. yeah because if if dj parson wouldn't have like 20 strength and there wasn't like possibility of another aggression and you were like keeping the tactic i would say like that better play around the pestilence will be just like leave there that warrior and just sacrifice the warrior for the pestilence and then just like keep the new population for different military unit but this way it totally makes sense that you are like able to defend, keep your tactic and be prepared for pestilence as well. Yeah. And so, also upgrading the warrior makes me stronger than Payada, so that could also be important. Yeah, true. Oh, yeah, so I, I'm not pushing <laughs> because I'm the weakest, as the bounce already said. And yeah, I just like here when for tra Trails Continental Railroad to just like present like some defensive potential and also maybe some late game potential that maybe with some oil yearly i can then just like rebuild my civilization and maybe like start fighting for second place or, or something because I, i'm still like feeling behind because my science production is pretty low maybe next turn i can go for one of these two scientific methods which you can see on the right and it will somehow like help me to like get science and then as a last step i can get like food running but if you look on the other civilizations you will just see that i'm like i don't know two rounds behind mm. so because of the war and the overbit on vast territory so i'm still like catching the breath and hoping for some miracle yeah i think you didn't really have much to do this turn with four science so next turn you can go for selective um, so yeah, this turn it's just great to get any one, and I think the railroad is perfect. That it would uh, you wouldn't be able to catch up with just the louvre, so just increasing your production, uh, getting the strength to stabilize. Uh, yeah, I think that is a great one for you. All right, so yeah, once again, I have drawn all of, all of these colonization cards, but sadly not uh, anything to push. So I think I will go for yet another aggression. This one will be a little bit more expensive because it costs two military actions, so I would have preferred one with only one, so I could uh, keep throwing three cards. And as Weimbaum has uh, said, he can defend, but he will be down to just the one card. Uh, so, yeah. The defensive army. <laughs> <laughs> the defensive army, probably the best card to have in your hand. Uh, yeah. But you can keep it, that's the important part. Uh, and then, yeah, I use my patriotism, get the extra MA or two extra MAs back, so the cost of the uh, aggression wasn't as bad and then i also get the extra rocks um, upgrade my coal build a new rifleman uh, i don't have a new tactic um, so i'm keeping this one for now um, or hoping to still i mean there's still a couple of turns in h2 where i can still draw the classic army or something like that even napoleonic would work um, so I think just upgrading riflemen is something good to do in general. Um, and I think with my last two selections, I go for journalism and develop the the bread and circus. Now, I mean, food is still a little bit of a problem, but I can't upgrade that at the moment. And thanks to my yellow bank, I'm still doing progress, still get more population. Um, 
Yeah, and 20, uh, 23 strength. I mean, I still have those aggressions. Maybe next turn I can finally get one that goes through on Weidenbaum. <laughs> uh, we will see. No, and it would really cause me a lot of problems if I hadn't a defensive army, but that card will help me now quite a lot. Yeah. Uh, I can just imagine that like going for mobile artillery will be <laughs> not <laughs> great. Yeah, and the first thing I do is to go for one cannon. I can't build two cannons, but I can build one to reveal the defensive army and I'm at 20 strength, meaning that I will draw three cards, which is exactly enough to defend <laughs> against DJ Parson. And also, I'm now again not the weakest, so that's quite nice. Sadly, I'm not prepared for the Pestilence, so if that is open now, I will lose one population that is already uh, sitting um, at my civilization. Then I have uh, some free civil actions, and I just uh, took the efficient upgrade the frugality and then also the scientific method. I already have some decent science production, but I thought um, having even more science uh, definitely isn't bad, especially I maybe want to go for an H3 government with the Acropolis. Also there is Sid Meier, Albert Einstein uh, in H3. And uh, so that could also work very nicely with those leaders. And I also get the fission upgrade, so I have no uh, one way how I can use this card. And I even thought about maybe, depending on what my opponents do, if maybe a digital person goes for even more strength and I have to react to that. But if not, then maybe I can just go for an architecture and for the scientific mm -hmm. method at the next turn and go for two very cheap upgrades. Um, yeah, but that depends on if I have to maybe even go for more strength at the next turn. Yeah, which leader were you hoping for at this point? Maria or Nobel? Um, yeah, I think Nobel might be nice. I mean, Maria is also very strong. I like her a lot, but I have not the most food production and already um, not the most population available to put, in, put into military, but I think I would be fine with both of those leaders. Ah. All right. So, Payada still not pushing. Yeah, I think I pushed this round. Ah. Uh, but I forgot what I pushed. So, yeah, I don't know. Maybe it, it was the... the yeah, I, I really don't know which card I push, so we, we will see. Yeah. And yeah, and this was like quite hard decision for me now if, if I want to go for like a scientific method or for a food and then I just like think that I can now upgrade my food production and I was also like looking at the reserves at the end because I wasn't like sure that just upgrading my food production on plus three will allow me to go for another population next round because uh, we all have like a double amount of civil actions so maybe end will age before my turn and then next population will cost four so um, I also take the reserves for for free and and as a glass card, yeah, I took finally the cavalry. It it should be like even cheaper, right, with the <laughs> Darwin bonus, but it's already for one civil action, so yeah. I, well, it wasn't that bad. Yeah. But as you can see, science is not needed in in through the ages. And yeah, my my plan now how to like get something going on is H three is coming, so maybe if I can take revolutionary idea for plus six science and there will be like multimedia that's maybe how i can like improve my science production in a future and then uh, until it will come just increase populations once more and go for another selective breeding to have like at least food and rocks production running and yeah. in the meantime hope that dj parson will get weaker and no nobody will attack me yeah yeah, one science production, so it will take some time. I don't know, is there yeah, no revolution, no science left in H2, but uh, yeah, I mean, if the H is one one turn longer, you could next turn go for another printing press, maybe, if you... And now I oh, find oh. Which, which, I, which card I see it, and it is like a good harvest. Ah, so, okay. Yeah, there will be like a good harvest, which will also like help me yeah. with the food. That is good, then. All right, so yeah, I still not drawn anything to push. I have drawn a tactic now. What uh, what usually is one of the best tactics doesn't work for me at all. I can't go for fortifications. Uh, I could go for another aggression. Um, could take away the cards from Weidenbaum once again. Uh, but instead I go for the scientific cooperation, which is a pack that I've drawn and Weidenbaum is so kind to accept it. Uh, maybe we can yeah, talk I about was, that. I was very like, what? I'm like the weakest and now they have like a really strong pack together. Yeah, this is getting worse and worse. 
Yeah, I, I was uh, thinking that Payada would not accept this um, with one science production. I was thinking if I should offer to Weidenmann because he does have more science production and the scientific method in hand. Um, so what did you think, Weidenbaum, about this pact? Yeah, I thought that it allows you a very strong turn now, but I also was perfectly fine to accept it because with you having the masonry, I thought that I should be able to get the architecture and then I can do my plan with going for architecture and scientific method, developing two technologies immediately and then having very strong science production so that hopefully the pact will be very nice for me in the long run. Yeah. Uh, my backup plan was a little bit Maria, so I would get a little bit more science, uh, still not more than Weinbaum would produce when he gets the scientific methods, uh, but at least I will get a little bit more than just, I mean, I will lose one when the wrong roads change, but yeah. So I go for Maria, um, because Zizka's time is running out, I go for the just system, because the, mace, uh, the monarchy did a good job, but I want more civil actions at this point. Uh, and then I will increase population, getting that one sign from Maria. Go for journalism, so that works here as well. So I will upgrade my science production, uh, making this deal of the scientific cooperation a li little bit better for me. Uh, I'm able to save one rock thanks to the masonry overall. I was very happy about the masonry in this game in total, um, with the Roman roads and Silk Road, and now saving a couple of rocks on that journalism. So yeah, uh, going for a little bit of culture after my strength push has kind of dried out. I could have gone for more, um, but I didn't really com want to commit more and more military units while not having a tactic. So I thought the switch into journalism was, uh, was pretty good here. So yeah, that's it. Keep the colonization cards and finally I've drawn some new events to push. And at my turn I have two events that I can choose from, either the freedom of movement or the politics of strength. And with having the defensive army and with relatively easily being able to increase my strength even more with going for one more cannon, I thought that I might be the strongest and so I see the politics of strength to keep um, pushing. And then the immigration is revealed, which I'm uh, able to win. Because of that I also really wanted to see it, because if Payada also doesn't see it, then maybe DJ Parson builds the bread and circuses, and then I won't be the only one who gets one population out of it. Sadly, the pestilence is resolved before the immigration, so I have to lose one swordsman, and then it gets immediately back. Um, no. Then, of course, I want to make use out of the scientific corporation pact, so I go for the architecture, and then I go for the scientific method. And actually, um, I can upgrade two times using the fission upgrade, and there's one nice thing about losing the swordsman to pestilence. And it's not actually nice, but it made me feel better because if I would have not, um, you know, if uh, or let's say if the immigration isn't revealed, um, ah, I guess it doesn't really make sense. But uh, uh, now it, I have a free population and I can uh, spend some resource because without a free population, before I uh, um, pushed and played out my turn, um, upgrading those to a scientific method would cause corruption when I want to use the fission upgrade. But I have now free population, so the immigration helped a lot uh, that I can do this, go for those two scientific methods, and then I can still get out of corruption with building one unit. I build one cannon uh, so that I'm then the strongest again. I have now some really nice science production going and I was hoping that maybe I will get an early age three government yeah yeah I very strong getting strongest here nine science production is uh, very very good I mean as you said there's a lot of science think, leaders if, if my math is correct it's like nine times more than mine science production <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, so I was like in a desperate situation. I, for for the first, I was like happy that and didn't age, uh, did, because then I will be like able to pop twice with the reserve. So it was like nice thing for me. Yeah, rain of terror <laughs> wasn't that nice, but yeah, that that, that can happen. Mm. And I, you would not guess which which card I see it in this situation. I see it like cold war, and like being the weakest because. Yeah. I was like feeling that maybe getting like plus six signs from event is the thing which I will need, but I also like prepared for that. So my my plan here is like to get rid of of the swordsman because I will try to transition to the classic army tactic and I will build another selective breeding and another printing press to be able to go for cavalrymen's next turn. And with the information that on the top there is a good harvest, so I will have like 10 
food, I should be like able to go for two cavalrymen plus tactic in my next round and it should also like allow me to be part of the Cold War with plus six science. So that was the plan of myself for this turn. So yeah, I know that like on the top there is like good harvest and in yeah. another four cards there is Cold War. Yeah, uh, I think this turn, I mean, was very nice. The pest, uh, the uh, Reign of Terror didn't hurt too much, I think. Uh, it was very important that you got the two population, were able to put one into the selective breeding and one in printing presses. Yeah. Good. So with that, H3 will start. Maybe we can take a quick overview and maybe recap the situation, how we feel. So, yeah, I'm on... Six rock protection, food is not so great, but I have a lot of population thanks to the yellow cubes. I have some culture, I have some science production, so I'm overall <clears throat> yeah, feeling pretty good. But I definitely feel like Weidenbaum is coming closer with uh, with this. Maybe you can say how you feel at the start of H3. I think I felt uh, I was quite happy about my situation. I uh, have food production going, something, um, I mean, you have only one food production less because you have three farms, so it's not that big of a difference. But um, yeah, I thought our positions might be relatively similar, but if I maybe get an early age three government, um, then I thought I could have a very nice position. But uh, yeah, I think at this uh, point, it's relatively close between us and uh, yeah, Payada's behind in culture, so for him, uh, he has to catch up in that and yeah. So for him, it's maybe uh, yeah, his position is a bit weaker. Yeah, I'm not even like in the situation of catching up in culture now. I'm like focusing on science. <laughs> so I'm just like <laughs> age, <laughs> age away, <laughs> age behind. Yeah. So, so what was your plan basically, Piala? Did you have any hopes to come in first? Or I, I, I have my master plan with the cold word. So I yeah. just like I was like hoping for some extra science. I have. I have quite nice rock production, so maybe if there will be like a multimedia, I may like catch up even like with, with a culture with, with, with Darwin. But yeah, I, I was still like feeling quite behind, but it's like a free player game. So maybe you will like wage war against each other and then the, there will be like a possibility for me. So maybe like to squeeze for, for the second place because you don't need to play good. You know, you sometimes can get just lucky second position. So that, that was like what I was still hoping for. I, I don't think that I'm like a situation where I should like concede. So because no. I still have some like chances. So yeah, I was like feeling at least still part of the game and I yeah, was trying to just like find ways how to maybe yeah, try for a second place. Yeah, definitely. All right. So yeah, H3 will start. Uh... Weidmar will lose Joan of Arc, but Novellus there next turn. All right, then I will play with those three colonization cards and still my cartography. I will push the autonomous territory, but that will take some time. We do get the good harvest as Payal has promised. So, uh, I mean, with Maria, of course, I like that quite a bit. Getting the only the lowest amount of food, but still more food is always great. It means I can pop two times here. And that's what I do, I think, at least once. And then I get the Red Cirques, the first one to get the happy faces. Um, can grab the urban growth. Patriotism, once again, is very good. I only have three MAs, so it's not the most, um, but with the patriotism and the Silk Road, especially getting those two MAs from that is uh, very good if I wanna go for wars or something like that. Um, then I will increase once again. And with the last one, grab the rich land. I mean, there's either I could, uh, because I had to destroy one mine, rebuild a coal still, mm -hmm. or if there is mechanized agriculture, I think that would be perfect for me. I still have a big yellow bank, so going for a lot of food production uh, with that mm -hmm. mechanized agriculture and even Red Cross. I think the rich land could be great for that. Yeah, and there was also a like possibility not to take a rich land and go for get, go for frugality because it's like plus four, so you will get like two populations. So maybe they're yeah. like getting the frugality instead of rich land and, and increasing pop yeah, may be better for you. True. Even like this. Yeah. The Maria. True. There, there's no chance for rats still being in there, so it could have just not increased population and grabbed the frugality instead. Would have meant one more pop next turn. Um, yeah, now that you say it, I don't think I, I caught that. Could have been, could have been quite great. I don't use the population this turn anyway, so yeah. 
Alright, then we will see my first h3 card draw, the tactic, which I could still go for, maybe it's not perfect, but at least it is a tactic. Emblem of Colonies, which of course is very good, and Competition, which also seems to be something that's playable, so overall pretty good first card draw, I would say. And I do see it, which might be a mistake, because there's the international agreement in and the politics of strength, and I'm not the strongest at the moment, and the decision to see it will be very unfortunate for Payada, because <laughs> the Cold War is the top event, and it's of course very unlucky for him, and I got very lucky here, and maybe I actually shouldn't have seated, I seated the international negotiations, I just wanted to continue pushing, um, Yeah, but I think it was probably... I will get stronger, so I think it was uh, not really worth it to uh, take the risk to uh, miss out on the politics of strength or the international agreement. I am not sure why exactly I see it, maybe just to get uh, uh, more information and a culture for seeding, but I don't actually think it's uh, worth the risk. Then I, um, yeah, one reason why I wanted to have the architecture is first of all because I can, those, can get those scientific methods very cheaply but I also have this opera in hand and I thought that also might help me to get some operas going. In this turn I can do this, I can develop the opera, I can build one and with building one with the open growth with the Harvard College I have enough resources to build uh, one swordsman. I make an interesting decision here because I just uh, don't take Nobel. I felt um, no, Nobel doesn't give the civil action back. It might still be a nice deal, but I have a lot of science production, which on the one hand is very good with Nobel because I might get Nobel prizes. On the other hand, um, I don't really need the science at the moment. And I really wanted to get this one opera going uh, to have no, not a lot of unhappy workers so that I might not be punished by a civil unrest. And, no, and I also really wanted to build a swordsman getting a lot stronger. Nobel would also help me getting stronger. But um, now I'm really stronger and uh, hopefully I can win the politics of strength or the international agreement. Um, yeah, but uh, if I don't get a leader for some time, then it definitely might backfire. But if I get an early leader, then it might not be really worth it to take Nobel and spend two civil actions and maybe two or four science. But yeah, it's a little bit of a gamble and I was hoping that I might get an early age three leader. Yeah. And Nobel is actually very expensive here, right? You have to grab an Electum and you don't get back the Civil Actions, so three Civil no. Actions and you only have the five. No, I can see it. And are you thinking like now like taking a Republic with strategy? Because I think that you would be even like able to go for both these techs instead of like the culture, so we'll have like plenty of Civil Actions and Military Actions for next rounds, but do you no, think about that? No. That might uh, be a very nice idea. I think I did not really uh, th think about that. Um, I mean, I was hoping for an H3 government that uh, early democracy would be very nice. Um, no, but uh, it depends maybe on whether when I take those cards, if I will be able to go for this one opera because I wanted to get a culture production. I wanted to fix my happy faces. Um, but if this is possible, it might be a very nice idea. Then I have seven civil actions and four military actions that um, yeah, might leave me in a very strong position. And now it's a little bit dep it depends a little bit on when the H3 governments will be available. So no. Mm -hmm. And also, like I'm playing Darwin, which is like quite good in like taking the key colonies from you. But yeah, probably I will not like hate it after them. But yeah, let's see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, Payada, you missed out on the Cold War, but you get the revolutionary idea then. So that's consolidation. Yeah, nice. I was, I, and I also like propose a pact to Weidenbaum to just like be able to defend, and this is like some false protection, right? Because when he will attack me, the <laughs> plus four bonus will not be there. But I, I at least was hoping that, yeah, maybe now my plan was like getting getting really stronger going for the the classic armies and then maybe wage war against you because yeah, i cannot like catch in a culture so maybe just like go for revolutionary ideas maybe get air forces build two classic armies with two air forces and then just hope for some war so that was my plan mm. for the rest of the h3 so let's see if cards will go my way or not and I also like take strategy, so it's not available for for you. Grab the revolutionary idea, and now I don't need to be the strongest because of the Cold War. So I just built one cavalryman to not be, you know, yep. to don't have corruption. Yeah. 
And to not be the weakest. And to not be the weakest there is yeah. the another part, thing of the of the pack there. And I'm just like losing one culture per round. So I, I would say that like plus four strength for one culture is always a good deal. So I was quite happy that Vader now agreed on that. Yeah, and yeah. I uh, at, at this point didn't have any aggression so wars in hand, so I thought I can't really uh, punish if you stay on low strength, I can't really punish it at the moment, so I just took the additional culture reduction. Also you being stronger than DJ Parson might be nice for me because at this point uh no uh, DJ Parson might be the bigger contender for the first place. No, so uh, I was also happy to accept this pact. Yeah. So Riada, you probably are still searching for happy faces, right? There's not really much more besides the pro sport. So if you want to go for military, you still need a lot of pop. So yeah, you're probably still searching yeah, yeah, yeah. for that as but well. But there are like there are two pro sports, so and they will be like cheap for me yeah. because I have discount from Darwin. Yeah, and Darwin Darwin doesn't like organized religion, so yeah, yeah. pro sports is also a thing which I will need. But with that low science, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was not happy like to, to see that I need that many technologies. <laughs> yeah. Cold War would have helped with that quite a bit. All right, let's see if I push. Probably not being the weakest, but I might just think that Impulse of Colonies is just so good. Uh, I mean, I have two colonies, so does Payada, but Weidenbaum doesn't have any. Uh, and yeah, I mean, if we look at culture, it's definitely... Um, yeah, the, the contenders for first place are me and Weidenbaum, so getting that colony, uh, that impact, that is six more for me than for Weidenbaum. And there's even the Autonomous in there, which I'm trying to win. So I felt like there can't be much that is that bad that I can't uh, can't take or can't push the impact of the colonies. And it is the independence declaration that does hurt a little bit. Uh, so especially that is some combo that doesn't doesn't work out playing the impact of uh, colonies and then losing a colony. Um, but of course, uh, yeah, I can keep the inhabited. So my yellow cubes are still fine. Just losing the uh, inhabit the the developed territory but uh, yeah one thing I'm very happy about is getting this military theory um, I'm missing out on some MAs uh, if I want to go for a heavy military so getting that even saving the science uh, thanks to the pact can also grab those tanks because yeah I don't have a tactic uh, Payada still hasn't shown his classic army uh, so being able to go for the modern army cannons and tanks are here so I grab those two we'll build one more rifleman and I think with the last civil action, I might grab the reserves or develop one of these techs. Yeah, I develop the military theory to keep drawing three cards to be the strongest here. Um, and yeah, basically looking like I might make this military game, there is, I mean, it's hard to say if there is going to be a good target. Payada is preparing for military as well. Um, but I think I have... At, at, at least you are like denying my plan of warring you because... <laughs> yeah. I have plus four strength because of Weidenbaum. I'm also like thinking about like doing like one big war on one of you two to just like squeeze to the second position. And I think the decisive card is like the scientific part because with that scientific part, you two are like able to develop so many technologies to just go for age free tactics. Yeah. So my my plan of like building some classic armies late and age free will probably not be enough or yeah i will need a lot of luck to be able to just have even like be able to wage some war with like i don't know 20 30 strange um, difference yeah uh, the scientific path pack is really beneficial for both of us i think it has been very great this game for for me and weinbaum uh, weinbaum has a lot of science but not that many that many civil actions to spend all of that on on small techs um, and I've been using that at least once, sometimes even two times a turn. So yeah, great pact. And then I see I actually, that uh, I do draw the war, and then we yeah go bite bomb. No, and this turn I actually didn't see it. I have some impacts in hand, I think already, or if not, then at the next turn. But I think I have already the impact of happiness and the impact of science in hand. Impact of science is looking quite nice at the moment, and with having the Saint Peter's Basilica, the impact of happiness could also be very strong. But now with uh, the two last events being politics of strength and international agreement, I didn't want to push. I didn't want to the DJ Parson wins those events, and so instead I offered a military alliance to be Payada and. Um, yeah, to have this pack going and uh, yeah. 
Then I take the modern infantry, I thought about some turns like taking reserves, playing the reserves for food, uh, with the Harvard College increasing my population, building one more opera that would give me more cultural production. But I felt I have to be careful here, the Japan has some military technologies in hand as the um, resources of Maria, and uh, if I just stay with those swordsmen and cannons, I don't really have a big uh, strength potential. So I went for the modern infantry, and it also helps me to get stronger this turn. Um, I can upgrade one of my swordsmen to modern infantry, and then I can take the reserves. And with my last civil action, I take the revolutionary idea that might even be a mistake. Maybe I should just take the mechanized agriculture or the computers. Mechanized agriculture could be very nice. I get some more food production going, could be nice for some impacts. And with the scientific cooperation pact, it only cost me five science. And a revolutionary idea is not really needed. I thought maybe I want to go for air forces and a government form and maybe something else. Then the science could still be useful from the revolutionary idea. And at least the mechanized agriculture is discarded in Payada's turn so that the Chepassen is not able to get it. And um, yeah, so maybe uh, uh, the revolutionary idea is not that strong for me. I mean, it would be strong for Payada, but I don't think at the moment that I have to deny uh, those uh, yellow cards from Payada. It should at the moment not be the biggest argument, but at the end I still took the revolutionary idea. And hopefully with the um, uh, modern infantry, I will be able to defend myself. Did you, or did you think about maybe leaving the revolutionary idea for Payada? So doing the opposite of denying it so that he has a better defense if I if I go for military and Piada could defend better or did that not I didn't really think about it but it could be interesting to think about it so no yeah, I, so that... I think Vader Bond still trust that I can like defend myself <laughs> okay. because I'm Payada. <laughs> yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it would be really nice to have like this evolutionary idea in hand. So now I can like tell that Vadenbaum still develops science for me, like six from a Cold War, now six from the Rev idea. Yeah. But at least he he gave me plus seven strength with the Pax, so yeah, I cannot complain. Yeah, and in my turn, I have like a handful of aggressions and I have war over technology, so I have a way how to get like for some science. <laughs> But yeah, you are still like pushing up a military, not like building culture. So yeah, you will probably be able to defend. But I have war over technology in my hand and I see that I can go for professional sports exactly, which will allow me to go for also the classic army and being the strongest. I don't know if I reveal the tactic, maybe not. But I at least went for the second cavalryman. Yeah, I didn't reveal the tactic. And I was also like happy that I drew war over culture myself. So at least like all the pieces to the puzzle was in my hand. Way to get 12 science to be able to have uh, two air forces is probably not possible. I think there is maybe one revolutionary idea yeah. in, in, a, in a deck. So maybe with that it can be possible, but yeah. I, yeah, it's always hard to draw air forces in free player, player game because one player is playing without them. But yes, maybe still I have some chance with this. I have war over culture, war over technology, so maybe, but probably I'm just too late for everything. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, you're definitely playing for your outs. I think this uh, pro spell is very important for you. Um, and yeah, as, as you said before, there might always be the case where I go for military and I declare war on Weidenbaum or the other way around. And then you might sneak in a war or just be strong enough to not be a target and might come in a second. But yeah, still planning to go for that war yourself or trying, trying to get all the pieces together, I think, is the right idea. So yeah, I will have my turn. I am the weakest once again. I have the Imperial Government, which I think at the moment is pretty good, uh, especially versus Weinmann, but he has a lot of science. Let's see if I decide to push it. No, I uh, push the Imperial Competition instead, which is also okay. Uh, but I reveal the International Agreement. So Weinbaum will be able to take extra cards if he wants that. I don't know, I always feel unsure if I should take this this late in the game. Politics actions are worth quite a bit, but we will see on Weinbaum's turn if he decides to take it or not. Uh, so yeah, then I will destroy destroy a lab. I don't have much population. I don't, oh, I don't have much food production, so population needs to come from 
destroying things. If I want uh, to build military units, keep using the extra rocks from Maria. I go for the cannon, build one of those. Grab Pierre, because uh, Pierre is great. Um, I have those pros, uh, I have those uh, arenas, those brand circuses, uh, and it felt like I think I keep Maria for now. <laughs> oh, I don't. I go for Pierre immediately. All right. I think I could have kept it for one more turn to maybe still use the extra rocks. Um, but I mean, I also have to be careful if I want to go for war that I also sneak in the Olympic Games. Um, yeah. So I do that. Destroy a knight. Build another cannon. So I actually will be the strongest. 34, 33, 32. And then I deny or grab the military build up. I might still be able to use it. So. Yeah, I'm putting everything into military. I uh, see. I mean, I have nine culture production, which is not bad. I still have the lead over Weidenbaum, so I feel like if I continue to go for military with the bonus from Pierre, and I already have two impacts in, and Weidenbaum has none, um, that if I just go for military, that I have a good chance of winning this game. Yeah, the top event is now the politics of strength and with that I actually didn't really want to push. I have some impacts in hand, but instead I just choose to uh, take the international agreement. But I am not sure if I make the correct decision here, because I used the international agreement to take the Hollywood and Fleming. I have no leader still and I need a new leader. And also when we take a look at the wonders, we can see that all of them are not that easy to uh, build. The Manhattan Project doesn't give that much culture. The internet might be difficult, the Red Cross might be difficult. And state building as well so i felt with taking fleming in hollywood i might now get a leader and i might have a wonder that i will finish i was i feared that the game will remain military heavy and that i might not really be able to finish the hollywood but even if i only build one more opera with fleming that's already a 16 culture hollywood so already quite decent and if i should be able to get one multimedia then it could get really big and um, if the game should remain peace will have now an adv advantage but um, yeah, I also um, was really afraid because DJ Parson just um, put one knight, deleted one knight, put it into cannons, has the tanks in hand, so if uh, he has a modern army and he has the tactic, uh, it could get very dangerous. So I cannot really, uh, no, I have to be very careful here. I definitely have to take the Air Force. I want to go for communism. Uh, maybe the additional resource will help me. The unhappy phase is a little bit awkward because of this. I have to increase my population and then I, um, I can eat more. I, uh, then I take the air forces and I also take the reserves to have more resources in hand. And then to get out of corruption, I upgrade um, swordsman and rifleman two times. But I was not too happy about this because I have now at my next turn exactly 13 resources with the reserves which is just not enough to go for two air forces and it could get dangerous um, i was just hoping that if maybe the person wants to go for war that maybe uh, there is a risk that um, he doesn't have knowledge about economic progress or something like this and then i could go for two air forces maybe i could also have the um, positional army which could be very nice and so i was hoping that i could defend myself but sadly i was not really able to take the engineering genius which would be very nice for the hollywood because i had to uh, be very careful about my defense yeah i think it's a tricky position with the hollywood uh because, uh, yeah, there is still the war looming, but without a wonder, it might get hard to win in culture. Because, yeah, once again, you haven't pushed a, uh, an impact. So without impacts and not more culture production than me, um, it, it will be hard without a colony, uh, without a wonder. So I think the idea of the Hollywood is good. But, yeah, it does cost a little bit of not having the extra rocks. Yeah, that I, could have I'm trying to help Vaden Bomb with the plus one culture, but yeah, he's still behind you. <laughs> <laughs> no, maybe maybe I should just go for Marie Curie, get a little bit of additional strength and culture, and then maybe uh, go all in, mil in military myself. Um, yeah, but I felt that with Fleming the Hollywood, I maybe can get some additional points at the end. I was hoping that I still can defend myself with the Air Force of now, and yeah. Yeah. I also also think that's fine, so we will see. So, but yeah, uh, now 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 like Vadenbaum has air forces. Yeah, I'm aware of the possibility that DJ Parson has like modern army in hand, but yeah, I I just see this as like opportunity to my like plan to get the science which I will need to, for the air forces, which you can see on the card row. So I just like went for the war over technology 
hoping that DJ Parson doesn't have modern army in hand. So maybe I will be able to then have like 12 science for air forces and maybe do the war over culture in the future. So I just like put uh, two, two, two more units to cavalrymen. I was also like happy that you get stronger than me. So my wave give me like six, six rocks and then I can exactly take the revolutionary idea plus air forces because Darwin is great. Yeah, and really the tactic. Yeah, Darwin is great in that uh, situation, getting the revolutionary and the air as you, as you can see, yeah, I will have like plus five plus six, eleven science. So I was just like hoping to win the one science from <laughs> DJ Parson. But I was like aware of that if he has like the modern army, then he will he will win the war. But as you can see, he will just steal five science yeah. for me. So yeah, this is like good thing about war over technology so that sometimes it's quite asymmetrical so yeah. i can get plenty but dj parson can get almost nothing yeah yeah i think per very very good turn that playing for your outs trying to find the one solution getting the science and you said no real downside right i mean yeah sure with the 11 science you could go for strategy or something like that but uh, that won't probably be, be enough you probably need those those air forces yeah. All right, so we will see my turn then. And I get the international tourism with Payada. He's declaring a war on me, but uh, that doesn't stop tourism. Uh, so yeah, that gives uh, me more culture production by a little bit and him as well. I, I mean, one of the strongest pacts in my opinion, or it can be one of the strongest, just getting extra culture production. Um, so yeah. Now we all have three packs. No, you have only one, but <laughs> I have three and no, I have oh, then one pack got, got cancelled when you offered us. Yeah, they, I, they I, can I, only be three packs. Uh, the, the scientific game, so. operation. Yeah. No, the scientific operation. Exactly. Yeah, fin yeah. Finally, it's not there. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I, I finally saw that Wine Mom was getting more and more science. I wasn't getting that much out of the scientific operation. So I thought this was perfect way uh, to cancel the pack by going for a new one, which was also great. And then, yeah, I had to defend against the war. Used the patriotism. Thanks to the Silk Road, I got the extra two MAs. So I have definitely enough MAs. Went for tanks. Even used the um, wave of nationalism. So 14 extra rocks to build military. So when I saw this war, I was very happy. I uh, realized, okay, Payada hoped that I didn't have the tactic, but I do have it. So that just means probably, yeah, 5 3 science. I, I will take that. And the way I take it is by destroying a farm, building one rifleman, and then upgrading tanks. One, two, I think even one more. And you can still see that without tactic, I would be fine, man. But you can like copy the defensive army, so even without the tactic, you would probably like be stronger than me. Yeah, I probably should have, could have worked yeah. with the defensive army then. Yeah, yeah, so maybe it wasn't that wise for me to declare that war at the end, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so then I get the reserves, and I think that's it. Yeah, but I... At least, at least I push you to the military path. So maybe you will then declare war on Vadenbaum, and I may squeeze for the second place. Yeah, maybe point. that's <laughs> next level, and uh, you force me into military to then go for Vadenbaum. Yeah. All right. So yeah, I feel very confident now, winning this war, sixty-six strength, uh, and still even more culture production thanks to the pact. So yeah, yeah. And at, at the end you will just get five of my signs, so it's just like like think spy on me, so nothing. <laughs> <laughs> ah, this turn was quite difficult for me because first of all I was very afraid because DJ Parson has enough military action and resources to build more and one more cannon, two more riflemen, that will be another modern army and that will be a lot of strength and I didn't really find a way how I can even threaten more strength. I definitely can't go for more strength with the defensive army, but I thought maybe I can threaten more strength with potentially having the positional army so that uh, maybe the Chippers would be afraid because I could maybe win if I have this tactic, but I, even with this tactic, I didn't really find a way. I thought about taking military theory, but then I felt that maybe just taking fundamentalism is better because it's on one civil action. And it's, of course, not ideal with having communism, but if there is a war, then you know, it is still a very nice solution for me. I thought about maybe taking fundamentalism and patriotism, and there were a lot of ways either I... Uh, 
uh, try to get as much strength as possible for the next turn with the things that I have available with the defensive army or I try to threaten more strength with uh, potentially having a positional army and no, and I um, and then took the urban growth because I need one more urban building that gives me happy faces and I choose to go for the opera which is maybe a little bit greedy but it also only costs two resources with the urban growth the religion would have been for free but um, then that opera will be available for the Hollywood so I really wanted to have that and uh, also it does not change that much uh, how, on how I can defend it the next turn I think it could even cause corruption problems if I remember correctly then I go for the air forces, I can increase my population, oh no, corruption problems with uh, increasing my population, I can play the uh, reserves and then take the fundamentalism and also upgrade one of my uh, swordsmen because I thought if Digi Parson has a war it is looking bad for my hopes to end up at the first place. And at, on the top of the deck is still the politics of strength, and that was the reason also why I didn't push, because I thought maybe DJ Parson would have already gone for war this turn if uh, he had one, because I, uh, I can only go for this, uh, what I just went for, 53. Of course, there is a risk, maybe there is a helpful event for me on the top, and maybe he just wants to delay the war, but I thought maybe the reason um, that he didn't went for war immediately could be that... Uh, no, that uh, he has not, no war already, and so my hope was that maybe if the politics of strength isn't revealed before DJ Parsons' turn, then maybe uh, he won't draw a war from, from, from that, and because of that I really wanted to make sure to get stronger than Payada, so that he maybe will not see it, because he's now the weakest, and I really made a big effort to get stronger, so maybe he will be afraid of the event, and maybe then the politics of strength won't be opened. Um, yeah. But if there is a war, I can go for one more Air Force, I can develop the fundamentalism, and there is even a small um, danger for DJ Parson, because if there is the last reserves on the card row, even on three, I could take it with the Harvard College, play it, and also go for the fundamentalism, destroy two things, and build two cannons, and reveal a potential pot positional army. I think that also wouldn't be enough for me to win the war, but then it might be very close, and um, yeah, so I have a way how I can defend with the things I have, but I also have a way how I can threaten more strength if I should draw the tech or take, or just uh, from DJ Parson's view, I could to have this tactic mm, yeah but i was not really happy i can't defend myself and i really was hoping that dj parson has no war yet and that payada doesn't reveal the politics of strength that's on top okay DJ, did, did it come to your mind to like declare war when i declared to you so because i think you had like three military actions remaining because you drew three cards so yeah but you probably didn't think like about declaring the war on a, on a dj parson during your defense of the my war yeah i was probably uh, happy that i could defend um but yeah i had enough i had two wars in hand already so i think there was no good argument not to go for it so I probably should have gone either against weinbaum or against i guess piada nah yeah could have even worked as well um but yeah for weinbaum the math would have been quite easy because uh, with, that, with that manhattan project and plus 13 for me i think yeah, it wasn't wise to go for oh, yeah. war against me yeah, yeah. I, I can at least I can at least maybe yeah I, I can go for strategy plus Manhattan maybe maybe not no, I don't don't have enough civil actions yeah so yeah you will win by one <laughs> yeah, okay. I can build just Manhattan <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I don't know there's a little bit of danger with the H two cards uh, but yeah versus Weinbaum uh, I probably didn't take a look uh, at how much strength I could get and how much Weinbaum could have gotten but. Uh, yeah, no, uh, as Weimar was saying it, I thought, yeah, maybe I should have gone for it, but uh, I d maybe didn't think about it when when defending a war, also going for one on my own. So, yeah. 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 And there's always a risk. I have the Harvard College, there's an event on top yeah. that you don't have knowledge about. So or a new tactic. Yeah. It's hard to wage war against educated people with Harvard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thing. Yeah, and so in my turn, I just like wanted to not be a punch bag, so I just like take the Manhattan Project and finish it. Uh, yeah, after losing some science. And yeah, I think now I don't like have any reasonable chance to have to finish like second. Maybe I can, if I have like uh, the positional army, I can be super sneaky and just like now play play that to just like say DJ Parson that Vader Bomb doesn't have it, but <laughs> I didn't have it in my hand and I, I drew it, but yeah, uh, I didn't have it. <laughs> okay. Time. But I would probably not even uh, do that, yeah, but it would be super sneaky. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that would be sneaky. 
Yeah, I guess, yeah, a wall from you, you probably don't have enough with only seven rocks and no hope for air forces. You can't go versus Weidenbaum, so... Yeah, I would need a very big wall on Weidenbaum to make it possible for you to maybe still take the Saint. Alright, so yeah, I have three walls in hand. Let's see if I will go for one. Um, which I do versus Weinbaum, so this time I do want to go for the war. Um, I'm not gonna get air forces, but I still think I can get one more army, right? So that will be quite a lot of strength. Destroying a farm, building the cavalry, the rifleman, a mine. Sadly, this main mine has to go. Building a cannon. Even the th uh, the last farm will be destroyed, but 88 strength. Um, and then I grab Without air forces. Without air forces, yeah, that is uh, quite a lot of strength that uh, is hard to reach normally, but uh, yeah, in this game, a lot came together. I haven't spent too much on urban buildings. I got the, some good colonies giving me the population. Yeah, you get the war over territory against Yeah, that's that tr true. Uh, Maria helped with the rocks and uh, yeah, going up to no, this many units. Like not, not having people in agriculture helps. Yeah, as, as always, <laughs> DJ Pausen uh, makes sure that he has a balanced civilization. <laughs> yeah, and no labs. And that's uh, when I'm. But, but for, vari for impact of variety, it's quite good, right? I, variety is very good for me. Yeah, balance, uh, not so much. Uh, Alright, so yeah, 88 strength versus Vine Mom's 53. And as he said, uh, he knew he couldn't really defend that. But we will see how much you can get together. Uh, first of all, I choose that I have to start seeding now, otherwise I won't get a lot of impacts in, so I will now lose the politics of strength that was on top for quite a while. Um, but yeah, I have some impacts in hand. I see the impact of happiness now, I still have the impact of science, so I had to start pushing those. And no, no, no I have, um, first of all, with the revolutionary idea, I have enough science to go for the fundamentalism and for the satellites. And then I also have exactly seven resources to um, go for one more air force. And then I took with my last civil action the patriotism. I thought about some something else. First of all, I thought about what I what is more important that I want to keep some hope maybe. Uh, although I didn't really have a lot of hope for the first place, or if the fear of getting last place is more important, or um, if I. No, what is more important of those, because I thought about taking one more card from the card road and I can, can't defend as well, but then it would be sure that the game will end and I thought that with only losing one war I should be able to stay on the second position and then the um, game will end because I uh, feared that maybe um, Payada won't end the age, hope that he hopes for a second war from DJ Parson against me. But on the other hand, my solution for that scenario was that I just go for a war against Payada. I even thought about going for a war against Payada now, but it doesn't really make that much sense because the military alliance will be cancelled, which makes the, my war against the other defense against DJ Parson weaker. But also the, the um, Promise of military protection will be cancelled, so Payada would lose four strength and I would be able to win the war, but it would not really benefit me anything. It would maybe be good to make sure that I will end up at the second place, but I also have some nice impacts, so I rather wanted to push those. And with the patriotism, at least I'm threatening to build two cannons, and if I have the positional army, um, that could still be. I don't draw any cards now, but uh, the positional army wouldn't improve my strength at the moment. It would be the same as the defensive army, but if I build two more cannons with the patriotism, I would gain a lot of strength. They was hoping that that should uh, also make uh, DJ Parson afraid if the game, if the age should not end, if he goes for second war, that, uh, and if he hasn't drawn this tactic. But I was just hoping that Payada might uh, just end the age anyway, and no. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I definitely in my turn was like thinking about that if I will not take any card then we will play one more round and maybe there will be like another war from DJ Parsons on, on Weidenbaum or maybe even I can have it but because of Weidenbaum when he like took that patriotism it also put the Winston Churchill on this awkward spot so I will 
not be able to get that Winston Churchill and without the Winston Churchill I will not be able to go for the Air Forces. So it was very important to take the patriotism because if there will be like one more card then the Winston Churchill will wait there for me for the next round and in the next round if I'm counting correctly I will have like with the revolutionary idea 10 science plus Churchill free so I will be like able to go for the air forces and even like for two air forces because seven plus six plus three is also higher than 14 and with losing four for the pact I will be at 58 plus 26 is something like 84 strength so it's like reasonable strength to 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 have as well but yeah with this play there was like nothing like that so I just like NDH and take the Churchill Yep. Pretty impressed. And build, build, build some irrelevant buildings because <laughs> I will be last. That's that's for sure. Yeah, I think the final standings are pretty clear at this at this yeah. point. Thanks no. for yeah. everything. But yeah, the the road to it is the interesting part, I guess. Yeah, we will not spoil the result. <laughs> <laughs> so with H four starting, we get one more turn each. And first of all, it's still 23 culture, so 150 to 89. Um, yeah, that is quite the big lead that I have now. Looks like I didn't play politics. Um, I'm not sure I could have probably found one, but uh, I don't know if I was afraid of what. I, I don't know why I would be afraid. Maybe I just thought, okay, the standings are clear. I will win uh, and the rest... Uh, Whatever I do will benefit someone, so I just don't do anything. It's always hard for me because I mainly play two-player games. How to handle the situation in the end when there might still be moving, like Payada mm -hmm. could still have hope, and then I just maybe decided... maybe you just you just know that you have this one and you just like save the time in the real time. <laughs> yeah, <world>. exactly. <laughs> Why think about which impact to play when I can just play none and still win? Uh, so yeah, maybe that's the idea. And then I will build some food to not have starvation, and that will be it for me. So, yeah, in the end... The balanced civilization at the end, yeah. yeah plus, not plus three not minimum. too bad, yeah. Not too bad at all. And then Weidenbaum. Uh, I was quite happy to see that you didn't build a journalism, so I could still push my impact of science. So at this point, I also thought that the standing should probably be cleared yeah. and the autonomous territory is revealed. I have a bunch of defense cards, and I was uh, able to win that. And uh, for one cannon, one air force, I took the seven culture. But now I'm at 50 strength, I only have one card in hand, and I thought I have to rebuild this one cannon. Otherwise, it could get dangerous if uh, Payada has a raid and my operas gets, get destroyed, and it could be very bad for the impact of happiness, potentially also for the impact of science if he destroys one uh, lab. So I, ha yeah, I had to rebuild this, and then I also wanted to build one more, one more religion for the impact of happiness, that I have maxed out my happy faces, and then I. Uh, uh, after the Japan went for one farm, I just thought I also want to prepare for impact of agriculture. Maybe that is an impact that will be in there, and so I destroyed my last mine. I have the impact of industry in hand, so I know that at least this impact won't be in there. And then I have now more uh, 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 food production than consumption, so I will score some additional points from a potential impact of agriculture. Yeah, and your your civilization is not balanced. <laughs> 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 but he doesn't promise that always, so I have to... Yeah. Uh. Okay, yeah, so now I just like see the sign on the wall, so I don't even know what I played, but yeah. I'm the weakest again. <laughs> <laughs> and I will probably just like, get some culture from one movie, and that's it. I will st still the weakest, use Churchill for some extra culture, but I still will be missing like 50 culture for the second place or maybe even more. Yeah, so we have happiness 8 to 16 to 14. Competition that one was by me 27. That is a very nice competition. Yeah, and you you, you did great job with mom building that cannon because I had a raid, so you were in danger. No. Colonies. Yeah, when I played it, it looked very good, but it turns out it wasn't that great. But luckily, that is not a problem. Then we have the science. And the last 
impact harmony 8 12 and 20 so in the end uh, quite some culture difference uh, between us but yeah overall i thought this was i mean i was i have to be honest i played very smoothly for me i felt always uh, like i had a good game going and mm, i mean there were some situations start of h3 where i thought okay white mom is getting getting closer is getting a good position um but yeah then the end was also with the tactic smooth smooth sailing for me how did how did you guys think about this game in total it was an interesting game and no, I mean, uh, going up to so much strength without air forces is uh, very strong. So, uh, yeah, so uh, deserved a uh, win of the war at the end. And uh, sadly, I wasn't able to defend myself at uh, getting maybe uh, needed something like military buildup um, on H3 tactic. But uh, yeah, we had, were nicely prepared for the modern army. We were able to uh, develop all of those technologies, had enough resources to go for it. And then I couldn't follow up. And without a war, maybe I would have been at a better spot uh, with the Hollywood, but uh, the DJ Pass drew a lot of cards, and yeah, so sadly the Hollywood uh, was at the end unfinished. Yeah, I think the, the, the Zizka you had at the start mm. with the very early war over territory was very hard hard for me, and then I just like tried to find some like creative ways, ways how to just like get back, but they didn't like work. Yeah. the end yeah so i think yeah the 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 standings are like pretty descriptive how this game went maybe virgin mom has some chances but yeah you were like pretty elite the whole game sometimes virgin mom get closer but yeah you with, with the with the war at the end you just sealed the deal yeah. And what do you think about your decision for vast territory in in retrospect? Yeah, I, I would call it waste again. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, three three units that early is yeah, yeah. Free, 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 free is too much, and yeah, I, I think that I drew I drew my first colonization card in H three. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I was definitely not very lucky with, with with drawing at least some of them, and when you have like majority of them. It, it was like hard to beat the colonies against the, the defensive cards and it was maybe part of my strategy early on but yeah I, 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 I still think that I didn't I wasn't like missing enough and with a little bit of luck for that cavalry man or if I took that knight instead of improving iron mm -hmm. uh, early in h2 I would be like able to to defend the war and everything would would be fine but yeah i didn't do that and and then it was just very hard to to keep the game going for me all right yeah yeah interesting uh so should we take a look at the standings now um as well yeah yeah we can do this okay so yeah, these are the current standings uh, as you can see yeah quite a few games have finished already um, I think on Wynom's channel you can see all or both other games already. Is that is that correct? Yes. Awesome. So definitely check those out if you want to see. I mean, they're kind of spoiled now, so look away if you don't want to get spoiled. But uh, yeah, the current standings right now. Timuris is on top. He's sadly not here right now with four games completed. Uh, then me with 11 points. Piado's also doing better in the rest of his games, but has finished five already. Maybe... Piala can tell us yeah. a little bit. So yeah. I think, yeah, yeah. I think I, I will I will fight for relegation this this season, <laughs> and I I still see like DJ Parson as my enemy because I think like Vadenbaum with like three games. But yeah, I, I I'm think I'm thinking that the only way how how I cannot get relegated is like win my last game, so I will have like three wins and three losses, no second mm. places. You know, always playing on the edge. And with the 15 points, I may have a chance to stay in a league. But PV4 was very unlucky in the first half. He has just like zero points from first three games. Mm. His fourth game, he also got zero points. And now he was able to get his first points. But yeah, he's, he will definitely be the last one. And if one player has just not that many points, then the relegation threshold can be even like something like that with 15 points i still can get relegated so 
let's see how it will go. Yeah, yeah. The way it's I hope BJ that you will lose, lose, lose one game and get just like two <laughs> points from the other, so you will have thirteen and I will be fine. Yeah, the, the sad thing is with Tamiris being so good, uh, one of us three is probably gonna get re uh, regulated because uh, I mean yeah, P four is definitely almost because safe. I can't, I cannot have seventeen points. Oh now, yeah, so, so one of us less than Tamiris, yeah. So sadly, this will be the only time, or maybe in next uh, or the, after the next season, we can do this once again. But uh, yeah, I think it was great that we all were playing in the same in Grand Grandmasters, all three at the same time, and uh, I really enjoyed our game here as three, yeah, uh, three I, players. I would yeah. definitely love to have a rematch. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so very nice. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and uh, as I said before, definitely check out the YouTube of Weinbaum and Payada. I will be linking those in the description. Uh, so yeah, thank you guys very much for being in this video and giving us your insight. Uh, any last words, Weidenbaum? Yeah, thanks for having us. Uh, uh, very interesting season so far. And yeah. All right. Thank you and uh, watch videos of Weidenbaum and DJ Parson. They are doing a great job and they are playing in my tournaments so we can still enjoy this great game. Yeah, definitely. And also watch Payada. He's not uploading as uh, as often as me and Weidenbaum, but uh, it's worth it uh, if you uh, wait. And maybe we can see more from you, Payada, hopefully. Yeah, maybe, maybe. We will see. <laughs> we will see, okay. No definite answers. No All right. definite answers, yeah. yeah. All yeah. right, thank you very much for watching and see you guys next time. Bye.